Hi everyone, it's Guillaume from Ernie Ball in France. Welcome to Hellfest 2019 and uh, for the first time ever at Hellfest we have the pleasure to welcome Sum41 and we have uh, Dave and Cohn. You guys, this is the, your first time at Hellfest. Have you ever heard about this festival before? Yeah, I mean, just seeing it uh, last year, seeing the lineup, it was something where I was like, why aren't we playing this? I would have loved to, but it was more because I wanted to see the bands actually playing the festival. That's true, because this festival uh, basically is much extreme music, extreme metal and everything. And it's so cool that bands like Sum 41 can come here because you play at the Warzone stage tonight. And uh, this is going to be awesome because uh, this stage is dedicated to punk rock and hardcore style. So what do you think about this? Are you excited to do this? Yeah, of course. I mean, the fact that uh, we're now, you know, entering the uh, our 20s as far as a band, it's like to see that there's still an audience just for the specific genre we play in is massive. And then seeing something like Hellfest that caters to the fan of music that's you know, pretty much like all of us, it, it's huge. Why, th there's no reason not to be a part of this. Yeah, and a lot of the bands that we want to see today are on our stage anyway, so <laughs> yeah. we'll just hang out over there most of the day and see Hank Von Hell and Descendants and me first. and. You know, interrupters. Really, really good bands are coming up, yeah, during the whole weekend. Uh, do you have some more news about Sum 41? I know the new album is coming out a few weeks ago. Oh, uh, no, oh, yeah, the new album's coming out July 19th, so oh, yeah. it's coming out it's in really about a month. Um, we've released three singles already. Another a new single just came out a couple days ago. Yeah, the uh, single came out, yeah. Maybe another single before the album drops, we're not sure, it's possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're really excited about it. It was recorded mostly last year and a little bit of this year. And uh, it's heavy and aggressive and hard and catchy, and uh, we're uh, we're excited. We're just kind of ramping up our touring cycle right now, so it all kind of starts right now. It's cool. It's like you're back to your roots of what you really like, like Iron Maiden style. And uh, you should have been there last year because Iron Maiden was there. <laughs> I know, I know. I wanted to be there really badly. It was awesome. So uh, okay, and what do you expect from this new album with your two? try to uh, have new kind of uh, fans or I think with every album we've learned to just expect that um, you know just to put it out and tour as long as we can on it we were lucky enough with 13 voices um, which was essentially kind of like a, a record that was long overdue and uh, we were able to tour that record for like three years so hopefully we'll be able to do the same with uh, with order and decline I mean, that's really the only goal and, and the only expectation for us is just to be able to work and, and stay out there and see the people that we love. Yeah, I think it's, it's funny, like at our shows, we're seeing a new crop of like really young fans coming to our shows. It must be maybe the power of YouTube or whatever. You know, kids that weren't even born when our first records were coming out are now like, you know, 14 year olds that are coming to our shows, 15 year olds that are just discovering our band for the first time. But we're also, then we also have like the old school fans, like the 40 year olds, 45 year olds that are still coming. So it's a good mix of people at our shows. Um, I think it just has to do with, I think YouTube has a big thing. You know, they're discovering yeah. our old music and our old music videos by just like searching online and you know, f they have their favorite bands and then they say, and then they get the recommendations for our band and they go listen to it, like it, come to the shows and the cycle continues. That's true. From for the guys who are just discovering Sum 41 right now, compared to 15 years ago, it's completely different. This is not the same band, actually, not the same sound. Yeah, I mean, I think just through the years we've been getting a little bit heavier and heavier with each album. Um, so, you know, it's just it's just kind of what we're listening to, what we're into, and I think it's a natural evolution of the band just to kind of that's true go yeah. go that way. You know. Good. And can you tell me a little bit more about your story with Ernie Ball? Uh, what kind of strings do you use, and uh, how often do you try to change strings, or what do you what are you looking for a string? I mean, uh, as far as what we're looking for, uh, me personally, uh, is a string that's stiff, a lot of good snapback, and uh, has a, uh, a bright kind of attack. Everything comes out of the pickup at once. There's no sag towards the low end. Yeah. And uh, for me, uh, I went through quite a few types of, uh, of slinkies uh, from different gauges, actually starting with this one and then ending up with, with these gauges, the, the uh, 52 to 10s. And uh, I ended up playing a, a set of Cobalts, 
The new cobalt, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they're incredible. It, the the cobalts, uh, not only will they last longer than uh, the slinkies with my hands, okay. um, I can basically restring every three shows. Every three shows? Yeah, okay. yeah, so I'm not making a massive impact, you know, as far as garbage goes as well, <laughs> okay. which is great. Because yeah. some other, some yeah. other brands, we know that uh, usually bands try to change every single shows they have just in case because they had some bad experience about that. Yeah, I'm kind of an environment killer that way. I change every, <laughs> I, ch I change every show. With your bass? Yeah. Really? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I sweat a lot while I play. I, I like crispy strings. Like, I like okay. that attack. Like, I, I need to hear that zing. And the next day after I pick up, and I, if, if my strings haven't been changed, I'm in sound check, I can tell right away that okay. they haven't been changed. They, they sound dead to me. They don't have, like, that top end. So, I mean, I use heavy, pretty heavy strings at 55 to 110. Uh, and I've, over the years, I've, I've learned that I, I love the nickel wound. So, like, yeah. you know, the Ernie Ball stuff's perfect for me. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of, it's pretty simple. Just the heavy 55 to 110s, nickel wound, and uh, every day changing. Every day. <laughs> Both bases. I only, I only have two bases on tour, so it's not that crazy. It's, they're just identical. P bases, 59 reissues, yeah. um, and they just get changed every day. Yeah. All also, right. um, we were, uh, uh, Tim over at Ernie Ball Tim. Uh, turned us on to the uh, distortion expression pedal and the delay yes. expression. Yes. And it's been amazing for uh, a band I play in at home called Organ Thieves because I can literally run a delay into uh, my effects loop and then run a delay into the front end of the amp. Yeah. And because I have the distortion after my delay that's running into the amp, I can actually control how distorted the repeats are. And it's awesome, man. Like, I think that they're really onto something with that. So I know that you have a pretty busy schedule, so uh, thank you again. Thank you very much for your time. Let's hope to see you again next year. Or thank thank you. you. Have a blast. No, I must hold.